evening, everyone. Thank you for watching uh, us tonight. Happy Friday. Um, it's Friday fun day, right? Yes. It could be Friday fun day or Sunday fun day. Um, you are tuned in to Tactical Talk with Mad Dog Armory uh, here with Jillian and this is Shad. Hi. Um, we come to you every Friday at 6 p.m. on WeBeam TV. You can also follow us on social media platforms, which will be on your screen throughout the show, uh, YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and all those good good social media outlets. Um, so please go ahead and like and follow us. Um, I was able to kind of subscribe, so I get a little um, warning, I guess, when we're about to go on. <laughs> So go ahead and do that. It'll uh, make it super easy for you to follow us. Um, I'm super excited to be here tonight. Yeah. Uh, like I said, my name is Jillian, and this is Shad or Mr. B. Or we have a lot of different names that I yeah. kind of call you. you. Yeah. We won't get into the pet names. Mm. Another show. Yeah, you don't want to know about that. Um, so it's a little chilly here in Florida. Yeah. So if you didn't know, we're in the Tampa Bay area. And uh, we're used to, you know, palm trees and sunshine. And uh, unfortunately, it's been a bit chilly out. And I'm um, not really liking it. Bit nipply. It's, it's very, very nipply. Um, <laughs> not sure we should be saying that. But, you know, it's true. Um, us Floridians don't really like the cold weather. I'm fine with it. I actually like it. It's nice. That's true. It's a good change of pace because it gets hot as balls around here. So it's, you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, so the weather's been a little chilly. I'm, I'm a little excited because uh, ladies like to wear, you know, boots and Uggs and things like that. So now's the time that we can do that. So um, that's, the that's the one thing. <laughs> Only a few, you get a couple of days that you can actually wear your, your winter stuff. Right. So, um, so pretty excited about that. Yeah. Um, this is now episode three, so we're super excited about that. We um, made it. We're going to be talking. <laughs> this show is going to be about PSAs and CWPs. So I was pretty. Lots of acronyms. Lots of acronyms. Yeah. Um, so if you don't know what a PSA is, what is a PSA? Public service announcement. Correct. So public service announcements, meaning some things that you probably shouldn't do maybe some etiquette stuff sure. um and uh and then cwps concealed weapons permit correct so cwp stands for that but uh we are going to get into that the cwp is what people call a uh, concealed weapon, weapon or firearm licenses in florida it's in a concealed florida. weapon or firearms license mm -hmm. So it's actually technically, I guess, the CWFL. Just CWFL, Concealed Weapon or Firearm License. Yeah, uh -huh. and we'll have it up on the screen. We're going to be talking about that later. Okay. But I just wanted to break down kind of what we're going to be talking about today, and that is PSAs and CWPs. So mm -hmm. super excited about that. Yeah. All right, getting into a little bit about Mad Dog Armory and Shad and Jillian and what we are doing here. Uh, basically, we are super thankful to WeBeamTV.com. Uh, they basically were able to give us this platform. Yeah. Uh, Shad and I have been censored for a very long time being in the gun industry. A lot of advertising, a lot of different um, avenues that we try to get uh, product, you know, different things that we're not able to do because we are in the gun industry. So it's right. very frustrating for us. Um, and when WeBeam came to us and said they were looking for a gun show uh, that they can put on with a male and a female, we were uh, a good fit because Shad and I both own Mad Dog Armory, which is a uh, gun retail store and training stores. Uh, stores. Thank you. We do have two now. Yep. Um, and they are located in the Tampa Bay market as well. <laughs> um, one is in Tampa, South Tampa That's in right. the South Tampa area, um, Kennedy Boulevard. And then we also have one in Largo mm -hmm. in Pinellas County as well, which is across the bay. If you're not familiar with the area. Correct. And the Largo location is actually the OG. It was our original location. We started yep. in 2016. Um, and no, acronym. What's that? OG. OG. What does that stand for? Hmm. Old o over girl? Gold? I don't know. Old girl, maybe. Because I know it's like OG. People say OG like it's the, you know, it's the original. Right. You know, it's the OG. So I kind of said it, but I don't really even know what it stands for. How about OPP? That stands you, for something you, you different than what we remember, than what our kids actually said Old that it was. Old people's for. problems. 
OPP does not mean old people's problems. Well, that's what our kids think. Right. But so in reality, look it up. <laughs> you down with OPP? Yeah, you know me. Jeez. Okay. All right. So back to why we're doing what we're doing. We are, we're, like I said, excited. I said I wasn't going to say super excited as much because I do say that a lot, but I am very excited because I love this platform. I love being able to educate and teach and be able to talk freely about the right. Uh, industry that we're so passionate about. Yeah. Uh, so super thankful, like I said, to WeBeam. So definitely check them out. They have some other shows that are pretty awesome. Um, and we are very thankful. Um, so basically, this is where we do the huzzah because we were going to like do like the Facebook, um, like F you, because Facebook is um, good and bad, doesn't allow us to promote any type of posts that we do or anything like that. We're very Firearm censored, stuff. super censored yeah. on, on Facebook. So there's so, a lot of things. To Facebook. Yes, huzzah. There you go, huzzah. <laughs> <laughs> so we love the huzzah, we use it a lot. Um, so you'll be hearing that. It's a Russian cheer from uh, yes, the show, is. The Great. If you haven't seen it, I'm, I think it's Hulu. I think it's so. fantastic. Yeah, it's really good. It's Slightly good. inappropriate, which we like, and also very entertaining, which we also like. Yep. So we love the huzzah. Yep. Um, we hope to keep you entertained and keep it real. We will keep it real for you. Um, some of our PSAs and some of the content we're going to talk about tonight, if you are not on the same page as us, meaning um, you know our beliefs and things like that, then you're going to want to change the channel because you're not going to want to hang out with us. And actually, the people that are changing the channel are probably the people that we're going to be did get the most out of this show about. for sure. Yeah. Please <laughs> yes. stick around. Yes. Pretty please. Yeah, stick around. Because you really do need to hear some of this. Yeah, it's good stuff. Bing sure. bong. Fuck <laughs> your life. <laughs> Jeez. All right, you went ahead. You Sorry. too soon. Story Still of my life. Yeah, too soon. All right, so Shad, so you've been in the industry for a while. Um, we talked yeah. about our two locations. Yeah. Um, we wanted to talk. Oh, I wanted to touch on Shad's shirt last week. So if you didn't see last week's show. Um, Shad was wearing a Let's Go Brandon shirt. A few people didn't know what that was mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and what that meant and what it uh, applied to. So the Let's Go Brandon shirt was pretty amazing. And my apologies for not bringing it up last week. Um, but your shirt this week is also quite entertaining. There, there's pretty much nothing hidden about this at all. Yes, your shirt is entertaining. So um, Hillary for Prison 2016. Um, yeah. Yeah, still not sure why she hasn't spent any time in jail for the shit that she did. Right. Um, if any one of us would have done anything similar to that at all, uh, we would be spending many, many, many moons in prison. Yes, agreed. And she, something needs to happen. I mean, I get it. She's a first lady, you know. Former first lady. Former mm -hmm. first lady and all that kind of crap. But the reality is it's still bullshit. It's upsetting, so, yeah. Yeah. So. Yep, I agree. So, uh, love the shirts, love the meanings. Um, Let's go, Brandon was of course from the NASCAR thing, right? So the yeah. people were at NASCAR, they were chanting, you know, "F Joe Biden" right. something, right. and um, the person that was filming was like, "Oh, they're saying let's go, Brandon," because the guy she was talking to was, was Brandon. Brandon. Yeah, yeah. So he won the race. So. He won the race, and it wasn't what they were saying, but yeah. um, so it's become but a thank chance. Thank you for that, because now it makes it much easier to go ahead and you know, instead of fuck Joe Biden, we can just Which say, "Hey, let's go, nice. Brandon." Right. Yeah, and you know, yeah. Bing bong. <laughs> All right. So episode three, super excited. Um, last week. Uh, we talked about sites. Sites, yes. All, red dots, all different kinds of sites. Red dots, yeah. lasers, uh, yeah. all different types of sites. Um, definitely go check out our other two shows that we did because especially the last, the last one was super informative about um, sites and optics and things right. like that. And I was just in our Tampa location um, and there was a customer that was literally asking one of our salesmen exactly, exactly what we covered. Exactly yeah, what we covered. Yeah. And so uh, it's really great for you to go back and, and look at that stuff because yeah. it was exactly what we were talking yeah. about. So that's perfect. It kind of makes it a little, you know, you're rewarded when you know that you kind of do this stuff and immediately you see, even though somebody didn't see the show, right? Um, but we know that we just covered that content that they were just asking about. And it is kind of fulfilling, kind of makes me feel good that we're able to kind of provide some of this stuff for people to, to learn. Learn from, so, yes, yeah. for sure. All right, so today's show, so we're going to be focusing on uh, our first PSA. 
And that's to be informed before you, before you speak on a, talk, on a topic. Before Say you speak on a topic, know your topic, okay? Right. Um, because we, um, did we get into being introduced on that first show? Like, uh, oh, this is this is Shad. He owns a gun shop. Be nice yeah. to him because he's gonna shoot you. You know, you we, don't we want to say things in, like in that. Friend yeah. circles, just because we own a lot of guns and we are in this industry, mm -hmm. um, it's like, oh, be careful what you say. He might shoot you. Yeah, that's the exact opposite. last thing that I'd ever do. But right. yeah, it does get a little interesting or weird. But yeah. yeah. So basically, um, the PSA, you know, the first one, it's, you know, fellow gun, gun enthusiasts um, and, you know, people that love our country and our law enforcement and our military, um, you might be a little upset about the, um, the episode, not the episode, the, um, the film, what is it? Come on, Chad, help what, me out Biden? here. The clip, sorry, yeah, the, the clip. clip. That we have. I gotta learn the lingo here. I'm new to this. The clip that you're about to see. So if you're a gun enthusiast, you're a Second Amendment supporter, right. this clip really upset Chad and I, um, and it brings us back to the PSA, the first PSA, which is being informed on the topic you speak about, right? right. So this clip is gonna show um, basically Joe uh, Byron. <laughs> I don't know if you guys- Joe are, Byron. Joe Byron. Um, and he's speaking on the Constitution. He's also speaking right. on uh, a couple other things that are infuriating to us as gun owners and gun enthusiasts um, because we feel that he doesn't really know what he's talking about, meaning be informed before you speak on a topic. So we are going to take a listen to what he says here, and then we're going to kind of break it down for you. So um, if we can, up, if we're ready, Dylan, then let's cue it up. Look, as I said, we're, we're not about defunding. We're about funding and providing the additional services you need beyond someone with a gun strapped to their shoulder, to, to their hip. We need more social workers. We need more mental health workers. We need more people who, when you're called on these scenes and someone's about to jump off a roof, is not just someone standing there with a, with a weapon. It's someone who also knows how to talk to people, talk them down. We can't expect you to do every single solitary thing that needs to be done to keep a community safe. It's time to fund community policing to protect and serve the community. It's all, I'm also calling for increased funding for the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms and the U.S. Marshals' offices. I'm confident that if we fund these programs, we'll see a reduction in violence. In the next year's budget, I'm also going to try to double down on this investment. I think I've got a lot of partners here in New York going to help. Mayor Adams, you say that gun violence is a sea fed by many rivers. Well. Uh, you know, uh, I put forward a plan to dam up some of those streams. Uh, I'm, you know, you can count on me to be a partner in that effort. And I have the U.S. Attorney, uh, United States Attorney General here with me today. And we put together a comprehensive strategy to combat gun crime in cities like New York, Philadelphia, Atlanta, and many other cities, San Francisco. First, we want to crack down on the flow of firearms used to commit violence. That includes taking on and shutting down rogue gun dealers. At, uh, and it's, it's about doing background checks, it's as well as outright selling, uh, uh, of that, making sure the people who are not allowed to have a gun don't get the gun in the first place. And again, for any of the press, any of the press listening, this doesn't violate anybody's Second Amendment right. There's no violation of a Second Amendment right. We talk like there's no amendment that's absolute. When the amendment was passed, it didn't say anybody can own a gun and any kind of gun and any kind of weapon. You couldn't buy a cannon and when the, this, this uh, amendment was passed. And so no reason why you should be able to buy certain assault weapons. But that's another issue. And uh, look, one of the things that we focused on, the Attorney General and I, and we're getting to the point where I think we're going to be able to have a real impact on it, includes going after ghost guns. Ghost guns are the guns everyone in this room knows that can be purchased in parts, assembled at home, no serial number, and can't be traced. And they're as deadly as any other weapon out there. But the fact is, they are out there. And, you know, this spring, the Justice Department, this spring, the Justice Department will issue a final rule to regulate these so-called ghost guns. But there's more we can do. Across the country, police departments report sharp increases in the number of ghost guns found at crime scenes. 
That's why today the Department is launching an, intens an intensified National Ghost Gun Enforcement Initiative to determine and deter criminals from using those weapons to cover their tracks. If you commit a crime with a ghost gun, not only are state and local prosecutors going to come after you, but expect federal charges and federal prosecution as well. We've also created a strike force to crack down on illegal gun trafficking across state lines. As the mayor said, as he pointed out, guns that are used to kill people in New York City, they aren't made in New York City. They aren't sold in New York City. They are sold in other places. Today, the Attorney General directed all U.S. attorneys in the United States to prioritize combating gun trafficking across state lines and city boundaries. The Justice Department is sending additional prosecutorial resources to help shut down what's referred to, as you all know, the iron pipeline that funnels guns from shops in states like Georgia to crime scenes in Baltimore and Philadelphia and New York and so many other places. Welcome back, San Diego. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> that was a little bit of a long clip, but it was um, pretty important. We wanted, we didn't want to cut it um, too much. But yeah. um, so, just first and foremost, like, wow. Heavy on the wow. I, I mean, mean can the, the guy the speaking. form a fucking sentence. I mean, when you're talking about a subject that you're informed about, right? There shouldn't be all of that, like, but, bumbling. Uh, but, uh, 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 I mean, there's right. so much of it. I mean, even starting to do this, I mean, guys, it's only our third show. And knowing what we're talking about, right. although we have notes, like he has a teleprompter, it's kind of like he really doesn't know what he's talking about. Right. It's hard for him to even to form a sentence. It's sad. Like, somebody help yeah. him. And this is the leader of the free <clears throat> world, right? This is absolutely infuriating. I mean, it really is. It's, it's mind-boggling that he actually won this election. <clears throat> or did he? Yeah. 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 Whole another discussion. All right. So we're going to break this down a little bit for you to kind of understand what he yeah. kind of talked about here. So, um, so rogue gun dealers. I mean, he mentions that multiple times. Right. Rogue gun dealers. Like, I mean, if there's a handful of rogue right. dealers in the entire United States, I'm, I'm it's sure a it lot. Happens, right. I'm sure it happens. But reality is like, so what That's are you going to do? That's not the problem, though. Right. Exactly. Not the problem. Well, I, I mean, guess, being, I guess they can kind of contribute to the problem. They but can contribute. The but the main problem is the money that we're spending. Um, the task force, force forces, <laughs> task forces that he's, is it task forces? Mm -hmm. That he's putting together forces that he's putting together, yeah. um, you know, could be much better spent on in different ways. Would you right. agree with that? Yeah, yes. Absolutely. Um, so sorry, Joe. Um, rogue gun dealers are not the issue. Criminals are the issue. Absolutely. So criminals are not going um, aren't the problem, basically. So but the people by making all these rules and regulations that he's trying to pass and go through he's punishing the people that actually own firearms and legally get them lawfully. and legally lawfully right. own them and lawfully use them the problem is the criminals and the criminal justice system and what's happening right. in our in our country right now with letting people off the hook when they commit crimes so this is the hugest yeah. problem that hugest. we're hugest most huge the Largest, biggest biggest ginormous mm, biggest I mean, so, <laughs> huge. <laughs> you know, example, right? Recently, within the past couple of weeks, we had a incident go down locally in the Tampa Bay area, and two gentlemen were in an undercover sting. Um, the police were buying firearms from them, right? It was a sting, undercover sting Under, with police. Undercover sting. So the guys actually pull one on the cops. They didn't know that they were cops at the time, and there was gunfire. Right? They're in the shopping mall in a parking lot and this starts to ring out and these so, are the rogue dealers well, that are meeting right, with cops right. to do a deal a gun deal in a parking lot of a mall correct but what happens is one guy gets arrested on the spot after a little bit another guy gets away but the guy that gets away is 19 years old and has 26 felonies a, a bunch 26 like a felonies yeah how in god's creation is he even walking the face of the earth? I mean, the 26 freaking felonies? Mm -hmm. I mean, what the hell? This is insane. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're literally just sitting here going, here, you can do whatever you want, and there's not going to be any repercussions for it. Yeah, it's very sad, because that's not what this country is founded on. Um, there is law and order to Absolutely. keep um, citizens safe, and it's unfair to side with the criminals. So yeah. 
Uh, rogue gun dealers are not necessarily the <clears throat> total issue, and it's right. not going to fix um, what's happening in the United States um, <clears throat> with with illegal guns and criminals right. and things like yeah. that. Um, the second thing we wanted to talk about is how he mentions that people that aren't allowed to have guns shouldn't have a gun and we should be doing background checks. Well, in the state of Florida, when you purchase a firearm from a licensed gun dealer, you are required to get a background check every single right. time. So the issue is not with law-abiding citizens right. that are purchasing firearms from law-abiding gun shop owners right. um, because they are required to get a background check every single time you purchase a firearm, well, correct? And right, and during <laughs> the pandemic, right, we, we ran into this problem, what, a year and a half, two years ago, um, during our peaceful protesting time, um, a lot of people came into the shop looking for protection, right, because they really were scared. And a lot of these people were people that never thought they'd own a gun, um, never even considered owning a gun. And when they came in to purchase the gun, we told them that they had a waiting period, and that freaked them out, because they, they were like, know. why can't I just leave with it right now? And then the fact that there was a background check that had to be done. So this information that he keeps spewing out, and the left in general, they try to make it seem as though nothing is being done. So when people come in to do it, and they hear that they actually have to have a background check, and have to have a waiting period before they're able to take the firearm, um, is mind-boggling to them, which, again, I think is a disservice for the fact that the information that is being put out is not accurate or correct. That is correct, and that's a very good point. Very good point, because we did bing have... Bong. <laughs> because we bing did bong. have a lot of people that wouldn't normally have bought firearms, um, right. meaning like anti-gun or not, you know, on the fence or didn't have any training beginners right. um, that did come into the shop uh, over the last few years because of the state of our country, country you know, right. um, and they have been very shocked with the actual steps that have to be done. Right. Um, <clears throat> so getting back into the video. Um, I mean, I have different bullet points, but let me tell you, the third and fourth one was that maybe he had a, a slight stroke. I mean, he talks about, you know, <laughs> guns being on, he should be saying gun on, a gun on your hip, but he said it on, on the shoulder, on the, uh, 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 like there's so much. Where are they supposed to be? I don't it's, know. There's so much going on there. Right. So that was my note that he had a slight stroke there. Um, then also he talked about the Second Amendment and that it is not absolute. Um, we did a little Googling and things like that, and, and it does, he, that is slightly accurate. But he also said that back in 1971, when the Second Amendment was passed, um, in the Bill of Rights, right, as right. part of the Bill of Rights, that he, you couldn't buy a cannon. So that was actually in 1791. Did I, what did I say? 1971. Oh, just kidding. It was 1791, thank you. And then um, the ATF, who regulates the, the cannons Currently. and the, right. all that, all <laughs> the class three nowadays, items, right. silencers like we have up here, or, or class three items, was informed until 1972. Right. So between 1791 and 1972, what Joe Biden is saying right. is that there were no cannons that could be bought or things like that. Can we own but, a cannon? But, but Why that, can't we own a cannon? Like, technically you can, and that's, that's the whole reality. It's like he says stuff and he has no idea what the fuck he's talking about, and it really is mind-numbing. <clears throat> so when you talk about what you were able to own back in the day, it's irrelevant. You're able to protect yourselves from a tyrannical government, right? That's part of your Second Amendment right. So the fact of being able to purchase or deal with something specific, there's nothing in the Second Amendment that states that you can only have this or you can only have that. So when it was written, it's actually extremely inaccurate what he said. Correct. So there wasn't anything that said, oh, you can't have this. You can't you have can't a cannon. Have you might not have been able to have a cannon, maybe because it might have been extremely expensive. Or heavy. <laughs> it was definitely heavy. Yeah, it, it wasn't made out of aluminum. So, uh, but again, it's, it's right. just the fact it was probably very expensive to own, so there's probably very few people that could afford to have that particular item. Correct. So, but I think having a cannon is cool, and it drives us absolutely mad when people try to put limits on what we can have and what we can't have. I mean, right. we're law-abiding citizens. We get them these items legally, and there's no reason why there should not be available to us to legally purchase items that we want to have. So sure. we don't put limits on um, kind of 
cars people can have or rims they can put on or, you right. know, things like that. It's like, why are you limiting what I can have? If I want a cannon and I want to shoot it at my property or whatever I want to do, why can't I do it as long as I'm right. not harming anybody? Now, I'm not talking about our property that we, <laughs> our residents, because we're in a, a residential neighborhood. But again, there's things that we should be able to own that shouldn't be regulated like that. Um, you shouldn't, because of criminals. Because right. of criminals not following the law, they're trying to punish law-abiding citizens by saying we can and, and we can't have we this. We consider those like extremists, right? And usually extremists on one side <laughs> or the other, right? Because there's extremists everywhere. So extremists usually um, cause problems because ultimately not all Muslims are bad, right? Extremist Muslims are usually bad. So all gun owners are not bad. It's the criminals that get them illegally that are bad. Correct. So if we don't condemn all Muslims, we shouldn't condemn all gun owners. Yes. Just that simple. Good point. Nailed it. Yeah, baby. Nailed it. What he said. Right. All right. So if you're just joining us, welcome. This is uh, Tactical Talk with Mad Dog Armory uh, with Shad and Jillian. And we are talking PSAs and CWPs today. Um, we just had a public service announcement for you to know what you're talking about prior to making inaccurate statements and generalizations that are not accurate. Um, we are now going to get into our second PSA, which is CWP. So right. what is it? Who should have it? What, what is that all about? So in the state of Florida, you can get a concealed license to carry. Um, and a lot of people tend to call it a CWP. So they call it a permit. It's not. As you can see on the screen, um, it is called a concealed weapon or firearm license. Because not only can you carry concealed firearms with that concealed license, but you can also carry concealed other types of weapons weapons, which are defined in our uh, concealed carry classes that are available uh, in the Tampa Bay area if you live local. Um, and we want to kind of get into the concealed class uh, that the state of Florida kind of holds us to that we, right. that we uh, have in, in our classes. So if you got into the habit of saying CWP, just stop it. <laughs> stop it. It's not a CWP. Um, look at your license if you own it. Um, if you own there's one. There's a CW on it, but there's no P. Correct. All right. So concealed license, concealed, something like that. Right. Um, a little trivial, but you know. Why are concealed licenses important to have? And is a license required to purchase a gun? Those are the two questions right. that I'm going to put on you. So do you uh, need a concealed license to purchase a firearm in the state of Florida? You don't. It's your Second Amendment right. So ultimately, if you're able to pass a background check, so ultimately, if you don't pretty much have any felonies or any kind of um, domestic, domestic violence issues. Mm. Uh, Dishonorably discharged. There's a bunch right. of reasons why you can't. But. but ultimately, if you're able to pass a background check, you're able to purchase a firearm. There are some communist states that require more than that in order for you to do that. So, but in Florida, pass a background check and you're a Florida resident, that is in order to purchase a pistol, you do mm -hmm. need to be a Florida resident, show residency, um, and pass a background check. So mm -hmm. with that stuff, you are able to purchase a firearm. So you do not need a concealed license to purchase a firearm in no. the state of Florida. However, there is something called a cooling down period, mm -hmm. which is a certain amount of time that the specific county that you live in makes you wait until you can actually come in and pick up the firearm and leave with it. So you can come in and you can purchase the firearm, you right. do the background check, money changes hands, and then your wait period starts. And it could either be three days, it could be five days. Most counties are three days. So as mm -hmm. the state itself um, has it at three days, and then any county can tack more days on top of that. Correct. So in Pinellas County, we have a three-day wait. And in our Hillsborough County store, which is in Tampa, it's a five-day wait. And those are business days, so you can't count holidays or weekends. Correct. Um, and so once you have your concealed license, however, it takes away that wait period. Correct. So anybody that has a concealed license can come in and purchase the firearm. They do their background check, but they can leave with it that same day as long as their background check comes back that Correct. they can take it. Yep. Um, so your concealed license doesn't negate your background check. Right. It just negates the wait period that you have to pick up your firearm. Correct. So just to be clear on that, because yeah. a lot of people are confused on that and they have their concealed and they say, well, why do I need a background check? Right. I already have my concealed license. And if you think about this, the concealed weapons license, it's good for seven years. Okay. So in seven years, a lot of stuff can go down. So reality is, is if something happens in those seven years, 
you may not have had your license revoked. So when you go in to purchase something, this is a way to verify and make sure that you're still good in order to take possession. So again, it's, it's a little step, but it's one of those that uh, I'm willing to deal with, you know, as a concealed weapons license holder, um, you know, in order to make it easier to purchase and, and take home. Mm -hmm. It's one little step, no big deal. Right. Um, so you, you also mentioned that somebody needs to be a resident of the state of Florida in right. order to uh, purchase a firearm. Now, they can purchase it from us, but we just can't release it to an out-of-state resident, correct? Or not, not a resident, because they don't right. uh, um, live in Florida. But if you don't live in Florida and your residency is somewhere else, because this is something we run into a lot, especially right. in Florida, because we have dual residents, we have snowbirds, what we call them, um, and those are people that have you know, dual residencies and things right. like that. But if you do not have proof of residency here in the state of Florida that you can prove to us, then you, we can ship that purchase that you made from us to your neighborhood gun shop where right. you live. So you can absolutely purchase, because you could purchase these items online. Correct. And, uh, and, and we then we can, can ship them. And we can sell you a rifle or a long gun, um, but we do have to follow particular requirements that the ATF puts in front of us. So ultimately, depending on the state that you live in, um, what are their regulations in order to purchase? Mm -hmm. So there are states that, again, that I say are communist states like Illinois and New York and California that have a bunch of restrictions on how to purchase. Uh, I'm not going to deal with selling something to somebody that's one of those residents because it's real pain in the butt and I don't want to lose my license just to make a sale. Correct. So, yeah, we won't do that. So, But if you have any questions about that, please feel free to reach out to us on social media. You can also visit our website, um, mdarmory.com, yeah. and we can kind of go through. There's some uh, frequently asked questions and things like that. So, um, comment one of, on the, right, comment mm -hmm. during the show. Sure. So absolutely. Bring some one stuff of, up. And one of the other things we wanted to talk about, about the concealed license, is reciprocity. Yeah. Um, so reciprocity is uh, basically other states that honor your Florida license. Correct. Um, so once you get your license in the mail um, and you have it in your hand, these are the current states that are on your screen that honor Florida license holders. Um, now you can see underneath each one of those states is a hyperlink. You can click on that state. So if I'm going to Alabama, I want to go ahead and click on that state and learn what those rules and regulations are because those little numbers mean something. Now. I know you've been trying to kind of study what those were, but I don't know them by heart. It's too much information for uh, instructors to know every single state's, every single yeah, rule. So yeah, we absolutely. really focus in on Florida and we put it on the person that's visiting that other state to learn about that state's right. rules but and regulations. Right now there's 30, I think it's 35 states, something where, somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's three states um, that you do need to be a Florida resident in order to have reciprocity. So the other states, you don't have to be a Florida resident, so you can be a out-of-state resident, get a Florida concealed weapons license, and you're able to conceal carry here. With that being said, we just talked about purchasing. That doesn't give you the right to purchase. So you can still purchase a long gun or a shotgun, but it doesn't allow you to leave with it the same day. So okay. you have to have a Florida license and a Florida concealed weapons license in order for that to occur. Okay. So there's a lot of different rules and regulations as yeah. far as reciprocity goes. So just because that state is listed on uh, the reciprocity list doesn't necessarily mean it's giving you permission to, to carry or purchasing rules and things like that. So right. learn about that specific state prior to you going because something as simple as a capacity rule could really make a difference in your trip. Uh, if you have a, a sure. Glock 19 and you have a 15 round mag, and that state only allows 10. You're going through New York or New Jersey. You or really like need that. to yeah. know that that state only allows that certain capacity. Right. Um, so really look into that state that you're um, going to. Right. So this way you get all the information you need to be able to carry legally there. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, so concealed carry licenses. Um, so I have another PSA, but I don't know if we're going to have time for it. Should we do it? Sure we are. Okay. So before we get into that, I wanted to do another PSA. Um, and again, thank you for joining us. If you're just joining us now, um, Tactical Talk with Mad Dog Armory with Shad and Jillian. We're on every Friday at 6 p.m. on WeBeamTV.com and all of our social media platforms, YouTube, Twitter, all that Instagram. stuff, and Facebook and all that. Yeah. Um, so a PSA number three, driving on the roads in Florida. Oh, so as we, said, <laughs> as we said, we have a lot of snowbirds. 
um, and we have a lot of dual residencies and things like that, and especially with the way the country is now, we have a lot of people from up north coming down to Florida. Uh, the roads are getting a little busy, you know, housing is becoming very scarce as far as what's available. Yeah. Um, so we want to kind of go over the driving rules in the state of Florida, and I think it's pretty much anywhere, but we just want to kind of concentrate on us because we're kind of selfish and we're driving on the roads ourselves, and it's Wisconsin. really getting frus frustrated. You know who you are, Wisconsin. <laughs> Wisconsin from this morning, you really pissed him off this morning driving. <laughs> All right, so driving on the roads in Florida, um, it can be a little frustrating. Um, yeah. because we're not following the rules of the road, okay? So do roadway rules um, change like being in the left lane? Is there a different rule for being in a left lane in, Apparently in Wisconsin, or in the, right the left lane. lane is where you drive slow? <laughs> so the way I did a little research on this, and slow traffic is actually the number two rule of the road. Okay, slower traffic is on the right side. So if there are two lanes or more, the second rule, important rule, is to keep to the right if you're going slow. Right. Okay, so this should be a no-brainer, but it's not a no-brainer to a lot of people. Clearly it's not a no-brainer because people are fucking morons. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I mean, I am, wow. Sorry. Okay. Bing bong, everything yeah, today. Fuck your okay. Life. Bing bong. What else we got? Okay, yeah. so Wisconsin. If somebody comes up behind you and you're in the left lane, okay, it's very, get the very fuck out of the lane. Just move over. And I know sometimes people get upset. I was talking to somebody recently about this, and they said, "Well, you know, when somebody comes up behind me, I'm like, just go around me." Okay, that is not the rule of the road, okay? So ultimately, by you saying that person should go past me on the right, you're telling that person to do something that's illegal because you're not supposed to pass on the right. So what you're supposed to do actually is move over to the right lane if you're slower than the other person. So ultimately, if you're in the left lane and somebody comes up behind you, they're wanting to go faster than you. And the only way they can do that is if you move over to the right lane where you're supposed to be in going slower, right. correct? Yep. So ultimately, move over if somebody is coming up behind you and you're in the left lane. Bottom line, that's it. That's now, the PSA. I get it if you're in the left lane because you need to turn left here coming up pretty soon or something like that. Understood, right? But at least move with the flow of traffic. So that means the right pedal pushes down and you go faster. <laughs> Jesus. Yes. So as Chad said and really drove it home, um, just move over, people, okay? Because ultimately, we understand you're new. You don't know where you're going. Shad and I travel. Sometimes we don't really know where we're going, and we're like, do we turn? Do we do this? You know, and I get it. You don't know where you are. And honestly, a lot of times when that happens, pull we'll pull over. We'll pull over and go, all right, where the hell are we? Where do we need to go? The what stop needs to happen, and turn right? has to stop. You know, you can't just stop in the middle of traffic. Instead That's of very going... dangerous. <laughs> wow. Look how pretty this is. All right. Well, that's our right. PSA about driving. Okay. Now, this has brought in something else, though. And you were kind of talking, when you touched on the fact of somebody said, hey, you need to go around me. Yes. This is a whole other one. This is the <laughs> entitlement bullshit. Oh, my gosh. We can't go down a rabbit hole right now. Yeah, we are. Okay. So <laughs> this gets into the people that are crossing the road, right? They're in a crosswalk. They don't look. They just step out, and they just start walking. Why? Do you want to die because the reality is, just because you walk out in the crosswalk doesn't mean everybody has to stop. Well, technically. So if you're at a light and the light is green, that does not give you the right to sit there and walk through traffic. I feel like this is very personal to you. It is very personal because it drives me absolutely batshit crazy. Have you ever hit somebody with your car? I have not hit anybody with my car yet. Okay, so then so you're a good driver. I'm a good driver. Okay. But a lot of these kids... Kids. Kids oh, yeah. these days. Damn it. <laughs> they sit there and walk, and they just take their sweet-ass time crossing the road, staring at the car that's waiting to turn, that's waiting for them to get out of the crosswalk. Back in the day... Back in the holy day. Holy shit, I'm actually saying that. Back in the day, you actually were like, oh, shit, okay, let me go ahead and get out of the way really quick. So you'd run through the, the intersection in order to let those people go. Now these little bastards just sit <gasps> here and stare at you. Jeez. Well, it, it drives, it's absolutely infuriating, because, again, it's entitlement. And this is the problem that we're having right now is entitlement, right? Everybody gets a fucking medal, entitlement crap. Yeah. 
Wow. Well, now you know how Shad feels uh, about that, and I'm glad you cleared that up, so thank you. Um, we're going to have to go to happy hour right after this. And yeah. To de-stress a little hours. bit. Happy hours. All right. So driving, driving does get us a little worked up here in Florida, but we're going to move forward. All right. Getting back to concealed carry classes. So that was our PSA about driving in the state of Florida. So move yeah. over. Everybody just move over. Right. It is not going fast. Your left lane is for passing. Um, all right. So And... Just because you turn on, put on your turn signal doesn't give you the right to go. Okay. We're going to have to do a whole show on this because there's so many complaints. All right. So we're going to get into that in another time. Right. So let's get back to our classes because I yes. want people to understand okay. who should take a concealed class and who shouldn't. All right. Sure. So you will learn all of the things that we talked about, reciprocity, um, different rules of carrying um, in a concealed carry class. But what, what the misconception has been in the past is that concealed carry classes, um, you know, everybody needs to take one well, and they don't. Right. They teach you about everything. Correct. So we have people that take our concealed class that don't read the description, which, you know, a lot of people do. So that's what right. our, we want to explain is that when you're going to take a class with us or with any other company, you're going to want to read through the description of the class because the way that we structure our classes right. is that you already have to be experienced with firearms and consider yourself proficient and be able to prove your proficiency with your firearm to take a concealed carry class right. because the concealed carry class is for you to get your concealed carry license. That's the training that you're going to get in that class. Um, so you're not going to have, you know, this is how you load a magazine. This is how you aim. This is your sight picture. This is how you should stand. You know, we're going right. to go to the range. We're going to teach you this. We're going to teach you that. That's not what the concealed carry class is about. The concealed carry class is just that to get your concealed license. So the, the topics that we go over in that class are, uh, items that you can carry with your concealed license, when you should carry, where you should carry, prohibited areas that you can't bring your firearm, um, justifiable use of deadly force, um, what is considered, you know, items that you can carry and you right. can't carry, um, how castle apply, doctrine, yeah, castle. how to apply yeah. uh, for your license, what to bring with you, stand what ground, to expect, stuff, yeah. stand your ground. Right. So all the statutes and the rules and regulations of carrying is really right. what that class is about. Um, and getting questions and making sure that your self-defense right is not taken away because you didn't understand those rules and regulations because you really do need to understand them in order to carry in our state. Yep. And you also, we believe, should be experienced with your firearm before you start carrying in our state because sure. I don't want inexperienced people carrying. They're going to hurt themselves. Well, or, technically, you're supposed to be proficient hurt. with a firearm, right? Mm -hmm. And that's Correct. one of the issues. You'll, you'll go to some places and uh, people have no idea how to load a magazine. They have no idea what a magazine is. They have no idea how, what sight picture is or how to deal with anything. Um, and in that situation, right, it's a disservice to the person because now they have this license and they feel like they should be carrying, but they have no idea how or what to do. And that's exactly so, what happened with us, to yeah. be quite honest. Yeah. So 14 years ago, you know, when um, I met Chad and he had guns, I didn't have any experience with guns. And he said, right. you know what, honey, let's take a concealed carry class. So we did, and it was the first time maybe a second or, you know, very, very early on in my journey with firearms right. that we took the concealed carry class and sat in a classroom and learned all those rules and regulations and stuff, but didn't learn any firearm training. Right. And it, it was like, here's your license. And I was carrying, you know, I had this license to carry and I had no <laughs> idea what I was doing with the gun. And I was like, well, this doesn't seem right. right. You know, people shouldn't have their concealed license that don't know what they're doing right. with their guns. So that's how literally this entire Mad Dog well, Armory thing right. evolved into being our business. Because ultimately a lot of friends and family members and, you know, friends, husbands and wives, couples, stuff like that, had that same situation, right? They thought so the then same thing. We were mm -hmm. out meeting and talking and all of a sudden uh, Jillian would get in conversation and find out that they had their concealed weapons license but didn't know anything about firearms. Correct. So. And that is definitely a disservice, which is why we're talking about right. it today, because we want you to be informed. Um, people that are inexperienced that take our concealed class, we still let them sit through it, yeah. but they're not going to get their certificate, certificate of completion that they need to apply to the state until they actually do Can the firearm proficiency. training. Right. Correct. Right. Yes. So. Um, so just know that taking a concealed carry class might not be the right class for you if you're an inexperienced shooter. Right. And again, like right? you said, right, it's different strokes, different folks, right? There's going to be different um, instructors that do different kinds of classes. So just Correct. make sure that you are absolutely 100% reading the syllabus mm -hmm. on what's going to be carried or what's going to be carried, what's going to be covered uh, during that class so that you know that you're getting what you are thinking you're going to get 
and any prerequisites potentially that right. you might need. Um, because like I said, it does say in our uh, descriptions of our classes what exactly are the prereqs for taking that class. Um, and it will be frustrating for the attendees to be in a class that they're not supposed to be in. So even um, our beginner classes, our handgun classes, um, we have beginner, intermediate, advanced, you know, so they're staged as far as you know, who should be in what class. And then right. there's descriptions of who should be in the beginner, who should be in the intermediate, who should be in the right. defensive course and the right. advanced course. Um, because if somebody has never loaded a magazine before and they are just learning about guns for the first time, they need to be with other beginners. They need right. to be with people that are on the same skill level. It's going to make create comfort right. throughout the classroom. Everybody's going to feel like they can ask questions and they're not stupid questions or, you know, maybe this person knows more than this person. So the disservice comes when there's different skill levels because people didn't Correct. read the description and they're in the wrong class. Absolutely. So an intermediate style person that knows how to load magazines and knows certain things. Shouldn't have to sit through that again. Shouldn't have to sit with a beginner. Sure. You know, and then I feel bad as the instructor and that student feels bad and then the right. other one's frustrated. So get into the right class, read the syllabus, read the description. Absolutely. If you have any questions before you book, the class, call that particular location, call that store, and ask questions uh, so you are in the right class for you because Absolutely. that really makes everything better. True enough. Yeah. True, true. Okay. Well done. Cool. Thank you. Oh. All right, so like I said, we teach lots of different classes personally. Yeah. Um, Shad and I love teaching. We're both instructors. Um, the skill level is super important to get into the right class, like I said. Um, in the state of Florida, you do not need your concealed license if you're not going to carry or if Correct. you don't care about negating that weight. So you don't necessarily have to take a concealed carry class, right? right? Well, and, and also feel like you don't, even because the little fellow. A-E-I-O-U. The bishop wore butlets chaps no. to the bat mitzvah. <laughs> We're okay. supposed to do right, that. Better now. Okay. So oh, it, it, you can have your concealed weapons license. doesn't mean that you have to conceal carry a firearm either. So mm -hmm. some of the times maybe you're just an enthusiast and you want to be able to purchase firearms and not have the weight, mm -hmm. right, in doing so, that might be a reason to get your concealed weapons license, but you really don't have any intention of concealed carrying. But it does give you the option. So it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Correct. So, yes, yeah. very good. And that's true. That is true. You can yeah. um, absolutely get it and not be carrying, but, um, but yeah, that's up to you. Yep. All right, cool. So if you have any questions about a concealed carry license, um, we did put some information up on the screen, but again, you can please visit our website. Um, it's gonna have lots of information about that um, right. and get into one of our classes if you're local or uh, if you have any questions about any of this stuff, um, just contact us through the social media outlets and things like Phone, that. Phone, you can call the shops, mm -hmm. you can reach us uh, yep. via email, Instagram, Facebook, all sorts of different places. Mm -hmm. Google, you can find us on Google as well, mm -hmm. so yeah. Yes. Um, another good thing to find out if you're with the right company or if you want to take classes, read their Google reviews. Um, yeah. So this is really important. Chad and I uh, always read Google reviews about different things uh, that we're either going to purchase or some task we're going to do or something fun we want to do. Sure. Um, people leave reviews for a reason. So it's really good to read reviews about classes that you're going to take Absolutely. prior to attending those because it's going to give you some good information. I always like kind of go to recents yeah. so you can see the most recent ones you don't want to be reading reviews from five years ago where that company may have like right. fixed any issues they yeah. had so um do you do google reviews Sean? i do i do quite a few google reviews and yelp yes Ugh. yelp do you use what yelp <laughs> you don't like yelp no yelp google. hides yelp hides our reviews don't they yeah. we have a bunch of people that did yelp reviews and basically they're saying that it doesn't have anything to do with the content which boggles my mind because it has everything to do with the content so i don't know yeah. So w I know that you are, um, are you like a, a Google review, like prized person? What is that called? Something like that. Yeah, I don't even know. Anymore. You're like a special Google review person. Mommy says I'm special. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I think if you leave so many reviews, be, you become like a yeah. something. Yeah. What's it something. called? Something. I don't know. All I right. have a star. Whatever. There's a star. Good. So yeah. Anyway. I do reviews. I mean, it's, yes. it's one of those things. Uh, I take the time because I know it's important and I know people look for information. Um, so hopefully you guys can do the same thing. Yes. So it's, it's always good. Definitely. So. All right. So look at the reviews of any of the 
uh, places that you're looking to take some training. It's sure. very important. Uh, we're very proud of our reviews. We ask people to, to give reviews to help the public know, um, you know, that we're kind of awesome. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, awesome. So let's get into our last PSA. Um, our last PSA is goes back to driving. So Shad's going to get pretty worked up on this, but I don't know if this is a big one for you. Honking. Uh, not as much because I'm not from New York and there apparently you honk like a motherfucker, right? Yeah. So yeah. honking is a New York thing, I think. Right. Well, maybe just north in general. Yeah. And I feel like that right. that woman all the time when I'm driving, like what what are you people doing? Now, I, I will <laughs> the other time and I get it nowadays. You're at a light, right? You're not supposed to be texting or anything like that while you're driving. Right. So you get right. to a light. Maybe you're trying to take care of something. And I've this happened to me. And it's like you're doing something and you hear a honk. You look up, and you're like, oh, shit, I got to go. Thank you. Right. Correct. Cool. Yes. Appreciate it. Right. Right. How long do you wait? How long do you wait? Right. That's, that's on the a way question. here, there was some Wisconsin person again. <laughs> Dang, Wisconsin. But again, they were just kind of sitting there. There were two cars in front of us. And ultimately, we're waiting. Wait, and about three cars in the lane next to us are already going. You would think the person might see it out of their peripheral vision. Not so much. But the person in front of me didn't honk, who's Correct. directly behind them. Right. I had to honk. And then they go, oh, let me pull my head out of my ass and let's start going. <laughs> so, yeah. So when is a good time? And, uh, and this is like really just a generic question. When, right. how long is enough to honk at somebody at sitting at a light? So like you said. Give it a couple of seconds. You know, one, one thousand, two, one thousand. All okay. right. They haven't gone. All right. Let's give them a honk. Right. I mean, it's kind of, eh. It's it's tough, right? I mean, what you don't want to immediately when it turns green honk. I mean, come on, right? right? I mean, that's a little redunculous. And the, and the length of the honk really does Ooh. make a difference as well. So oh, the yeah. length of the honk. Oh yeah, really you, you makes lay a on it and you're really telling somebody you're pissed off. Especially in the Jeep. So the Jeep has like a upgraded horn that's kind of like right. trainish, you know. So you lay on that. It's just. Yeah, I don't like a hon I don't like when people honk at me. I don't like it. I get offended. Like, what are you honking at me? The only time I don't mind it, like you said, is if I'm kind of not paying attention, looking, you right. know, at yeah. my phone. I'm at a light and I'm trying to answer somebody or something, which we're probably not supposed to do, but I'm doing it because if I'm you're, stopped. If you're stopped at the light, I think in it's Florida up. it's okay because you're not moving. I know there are other states that it's like flat out and hard no, but you're not I moving. I hope we're giving that good information because I didn't research that, but I'm not sure if you are or you aren't. But regardless. If you happen to not be paying attention and somebody honks at me and to tell me it's green, then I'm like, oh, thanks. But right. the whole like it just turned green and then somebody's like, Wah! you know, I right. mean, I get yeah. a little annoyed with that. So Ultimately, you can yeah. give the polite. Hey, thank you. Yeah, like right. honk. Yep. Just a, a little it. toot, you know, toots are OK. Long. <laughs> Full on, full on honks, oh not boy. so We're much. Talking about toots and honks. That's a whole nother episode too, <laughs> baby. Oh goodness, too funny. All right, so we got the honking down. So a couple I of seconds, so. right? So the light's green. Mm. Somebody's not paying attention. You know, three to five seconds. Because some of the times you're like, okay, and you you, you see it, up. and you gotta, you know, Correct. so you can kind of most of the time look and see if somebody's paying attention. Sure. But you give it a few seconds, and they're not going anywhere. Exactly. Honk. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Cool. All right. So we're going to wrap it up and say uh, thank you again so much for watching. Um, we're super excited to be here. Uh, thank you for joining Tactical Talk with Shad and Jillian, um, the owners of Mad Dog Armory. Um, we're super excited to be able to bring you these important PSAs and CWP information and all that good stuff. Yeah. Um, we're going to be um, looking for our viewers to give us some information on some topics that they maybe would like us to yeah. cover. We've been dabbling a little bit in what next week's show uh, will be on. I think maybe suppressors. Maybe? I have some boxes down there if yeah. you want to grab them. So yeah. we can do a little intro to suppressors because yeah. silencers or suppressors are. Um, legal in the state of Florida, you can purchase them. Um, and the ATF just started with some e-forms, so supposedly 90-day return on, on getting your tax stamp in order to get this done. So, so if you're not familiar with what a tax stamp is or, yeah. or all that stuff. We're going to talk about that stuff. We're that all, all has, fun stuff. Yeah, that all yeah. has to do with silencers yeah. and things like that. Um, so we can uh, put that in the trough of things. Sure. Is that good? Trough. Okay. Sure. And the bin of things to and talk, Dylan potentially talk about it today. Dylan yes, was Dylan filling in for job. Rob. Apparently, Rob had some sex capades or something like that. Jesus, Chad. Jesus. 
No, you don't say things no. like that. No. Well <laughs> done, says. Rob. Well, okay. So anyway, let's move on. Don't tell Shad any secrets. <laughs> Whatever you do. <laughs> Dylan did a great job today. Um, Dylan is actually the one that's been putting up some info for you as we're, we've been talking. And, um, and we yeah. appreciate everybody He's here at producer. We Beam TV because um, we wait to the last minute to give them stuff. So, uh, you know, we're kind of busy and doing stuff, but I usually write the shows on the way here <laughs> in the car. Um, but... So we literally do fly by the seat of our pants. Yes. Literally. But we'll always give it to you real, and that's yeah. something that you'll find with Shad and I, is that uh, we're very passionate about what we do. We're very passionate about gathering information, learning new things, and pe being able to pass it along to the public. So we will always be real with you, and we'll always be honest. Yeah. Um, and we're going to call you, uh, you out, Byron, when we see something that bing we don't bong. agree. Bing bong. Fuck your life. life. Bing bong. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> your life. Bing with. bong. Um, but thank you again for joining us. We really appreciate you. Um, WeBeamTV.com rocks. Uh, follow us on social media, MD Armory uh, and Mad Dog Armory on YouTube. Mm, yeah. Something like that, yeah. YouTube. You could just search Tactical yeah. Talk with Mad Dog Armory and find us that way too. But I guess we should figure out those different things, and I'm sure they're up on the screen because Dylan's nailing it. So everybody have an absolutely wonderful Friday evening, and thank you again for joining us Feel on better, Rob. Tactical Talk, and I'm so sorry, Rob.